While it is the case that Numenera is fairly lightweight when it comes to rules, implementing the namesake of the system it's based on, that being ciphers, is where things can get a little tricky, especially for newcomers. Ciphers, as they're introduced in Numenera Discovery, are meant to be one-time use items the players are to find regularly. There are as many as 140 ciphers on offer from the core books. This can feel like a lot of busy work for both players and GMs. In this video, I'm going to introduce a method for keeping track of ciphers your group uses and offer some ways to think about how to implement this method to keep things simple and straightforward, focused on the game and not on managing lists and charts. Discovery is at the heart of Numenera. It's not a game about combat. The reward for a player is to discover new things, and ciphers are a part of that. While GMs may have their own internal notes that sort and catalog ciphers, it's how the players come to find and discover these items that really makes a difference in the game. All players, regardless of their character type, should consider dedicating a section of their in-game notes to cataloging the ciphers they find and enjoy using. Think of it like a spell book, a list of the strange and unique items and phenomena your character will come across. Nanos, Rites, and Delves should find this as a natural fit and it can really help their players get into character, as one could easily imagine such characters cataloging and journaling their discoveries quite often. Glaives, Jax, and Archai will also benefit from this, as they are free to use ciphers and may gravitate toward different kinds of ciphers that help them achieve what their character is focused on. The most critical part of this cipher journal is that you should only be cataloging the ciphers you've used and you find memorable, the ones you enjoy using. This prevents your cipher journal from becoming a black hole of information, an endless list of ciphers that can be hard to sort through, particularly if you're cataloging ciphers that don't feel interesting or essential to your character. It takes what is presented as pages and pages of ciphers in the rule books and focuses in instead on the ones that you enjoy using. While it might run a little bit against the spirit of Numenera and the cipher system, players may focus on specific kinds of ciphers that share common functions and that fit their character's meta role in the game quite closely. Glaives, for example, may keep a journal of mostly damage dealing and curative ciphers, while nanos may be interested in more spell-like exotic effects. There are many ways you can create your own categories of ciphers, allowing different players to focus on different ones and making the large list presented in the book more digestible. You may choose to have different categories, such as combat ciphers that deal damage and provide an advantage in combat, mind-affecting ciphers that can deeply influence role-playing and social interaction, movement ciphers that grant players extra speed or even the ability to teleport, curative ciphers to allow players to rely on more than just their recovery roles to restore ability stat pools, and environment Experimental ciphers that affect the surrounding space. You can have multiple categories in your own cipher journal, but it's essential that you catalog only the ones you enjoy using. This can allow for some great collaboration as members of the party will focus on different ciphers, making the ones in play likely more dynamic and varied. Digital note-taking apps like OneNote, Notion, or Evernote are great for this, though I will say that the speed of cataloging ciphers in digital note apps can lead to them being forgotten more easily. And without concern for real estate in a physical book, players may be more tempted to list every cipher they come across. By making specific, diligent entries in your cipher journal, you'll not only have a record of your character's discoveries, but you'll also start to demystify what sometimes feels like a monolithic list of items and abilities. You'll know what ciphers you value having on you, and you'll keep an eye out for those specific ones out in the wild or in shops. You'll also think more collaboratively with other players, who may or may not have different entries in their journals. While keeping a cipher journal will largely be a player's activity, having your players keeping track of what ciphers they enjoy is essential information for a Numenera GM. After a few sessions, you'll begin to get a sense of what ciphers your players enjoy using, a set of data that will enable you to shape future adventures in ways that take this into account. Depending on your style of play, you may decide to be quick and fast with how players find the ciphers they're interested in. Not every GM enjoys filling the nooks and crannies of the Ninth World with ciphers, they simply want to focus on plot and thematic elements. This is totally valid, as ciphers can present a bit of busy work. To ease this up, GMs may decide to grant players any cipher of their choosing from their journals at the start of an in-game day. 
It can be an abstract representation of them going to a shop or finding some other place where they can acquire these items. This process can be very similar to how certain magic classes in fantasy RPGs prepare the spells they wish to use each day. This approach does not break the game. Characters still have a limit of how many ciphers they can have on them at any given time, and if players are only cataloging the ciphers they've enjoyed using, they won't necessarily be wading through a giant list, but will instead be more direct in knowing what they want. GMs who take this approach can expedite the mundane portions of a game as well, such as perusing a shop for items. It is often the case that role-playing out an interaction with a shopkeep can be fun or important to a quest, but sometimes players just want nothing more than to make sure they're equipped for the adventure to come. Access to ciphers in a player's cipher journal doesn't have to be without constraints, however. GMs may decide to tell players, for example, that they only have access to ciphers of a certain level while in a certain town. A small farming village may only have level 1 ciphers, and ciphers that may only be useful to farming at that. A massive metropolis, by comparison, may have a much wider selection. Knowledge of what ciphers your players enjoy using also aids in adventure design, as you'll start to have an expectation of what abilities your players will want to acquire. This is essential information for designing challenges and hiding secrets. You can design adventures to play to the strengths of what ciphers your players are likely to have on them, or you can design situations that challenge and push them a bit out of their comfort zone. You can think of the thematic concepts of a specific adventure and theme ciphers to work in harmony with the surroundings. If the players are exploring a winding tower of a mad nano who's learned to master time, perhaps a glaive can find a curative cipher that restores ability pool points by means of living literally turning back the clock on their body by an hour. This might be nothing more than a rejuvenator cipher on paper, but by having the freedom to think more thematically and knowing that your glaive will be interested in using a rejuvenator cipher, the GM can be free to focus more on the narrative presence of these unique items. Cipher journals will also allow an entire gaming group to more easily digest and use the hundreds of ciphers that MCG has introduced over the years. After a good number of sessions, it may be the case that players will resort to certain choice ciphers, creating a sort of economy or pool of expected abilities and powers. This makes the introduction of new ciphers significant and memorable. GMs may want to consider sticking with ciphers that players have cataloged for a few sessions before introducing new ones. This will help keep everyone's memory fresh on the abilities they like using, while making new additions notable. With the amount of ciphers that have been added to the game over the years, there are likely some that work better for certain groups than others. Players keeping a cipher journal will ensure that they only keep track of the ones most essential for their game experience and their character concepts. This will help highlight areas where new ciphers can emerge and allow for interesting and new gaming experiences. With the focus on discovery and exciting narrative moments, having players catalog the ciphers they enjoy, using that record to navigate the world and recall what abilities they prefer having access to, means that they will also focus more on the times they've used them. Players will remember the time they escaped the destruction of a tower by use of a reality spike they fixed in mid-air and slid down a rope from. A glaive will remember the time they used a density nodule to get an edge in a particularly difficult conflict. A jack will remember the time she used a datasphere siphon to get a bit of critical info on a black market trading route, and a nano will remember the time he used a phase changer to slip into the inner workings of an ancient machine to shut it down. Cipher journals will help keep these moments fresh while helping players get a clearer picture of what abilities fit their character concepts. It will be an essential collection of data for GMs when it comes to guiding the experience, freeing up some of the busy work and creating opportunities for interesting thematic and narrative twists. Navigating the long lists of ciphers can be very intimidating, especially for newcomers to the game. Like a book of the world's mysterious secrets, a player's list of selected and favored ciphers can set the stage for a greater level of exploration and discovery in the Ninth World. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to The Infinite Construct for new Numenera videos every week. And please give me a follow on Twitch at The Infinite Construct, as on April 1st I will start streaming Torment Tides of Numenera.